I'm so thrilled. Um, I've been challenged or been nominated to rise to the three things I've learned this year challenge on YouTube um, by the lovely Tamara from the Swiss plot. So, oh, thank you, Tamara. I can't put into words how grateful I am for this, although it may seem so fairly trivial to some people, but the nomination has actually um, enabled my little channel to be reached by so many more people. And I've gained oh, actually 50% more subscribers in the last couple of days than I've um, gained since July this year. So overwhelmed and thrilled to bits with it. So I'm now hoping that um, I can rise to this challenge. I will have to nominate three other people um, and not want to be too presumptuous. Um, there are a few channels that I follow um, that I would like to nominate and I'll come to those later. Um, they're a lot bigger and more successful channels than mine but they're ones that I've followed for some years now. So like I say I'm a bit presumptuous but I'm gonna have a go. Okay so um, I've had to write them down because I'm so forgetful and I get lost in my thoughts and sidetracked so I'm going to try and stick to this. Um, the first thing I've learned this year is that growing in a greenhouse is very different from growing in my old polytunnel. Now in February this year I had a um, beautiful greenhouse installed in the garden something that I'd wanted for absolutely years um, and had the opportunity to get one and to be honest my little kitchen garden um, is actually my own back garden and I wanted it to look nice um, and all I could see when I was sitting in my sort of dining area was this great big swathe of green plastic from the polytunnel it served me wonderfully well. I'd had it for some years, but it it wasn't very pretty, let's say. It wasn't aesthetically pleasing from the house. And it used to rattle about and like a tent would in the wind. And I don't know whether it actually annoyed the neighbours, but it certainly annoyed me at times. Um, and it was prone to tearing in the wind. So there'd been several replacement covers. Um, but it had served me well and I'd always grown my tomatoes in there and they'd been absolutely fabulous. I can't fault it for that. So greenhouse was installed in February and oh, it just made the whole garden look so much nicer. I was thrilled to bits with it and I changed the colour scheme of the garden. So again, um, the whole garden just looked so different I was thrilled to bits um, so everything's been experimental in it all my seedlings that I've grown this year fabulous not a problem although I have realized how much I've had to water them compared to when they were in the polytunnel um, but my tomatoes failed miserably and I think the difference is well, well there was a few th problems with it really with the polytunnel um, you could directly sow into the ground. I had two long beds in there. So the, the greenhouse has got um, a concrete base, so there's no actual um, bed in there for me to plant straight into. So this year, I've grown the tomatoes um, in the largest grow bags I could find with, um, I think they were 12 or 15 inch pots stood stood on them to try and give them a bit of depth and keep the roots cool um but they just did not do well in there at all initially i thought that it was to do with the the method of planting um and not being sufficiently watered um but then at the end of the season when i it was time to pull them up I found they were absolutely infested with ants. So 
that probably is the very reason why they failed so miserably. Um, but it has been quite challenging. I found um, in the polytunnel, because it was straight into the bed, um, it was no different from growing outside, except that they were more sheltered and um, never seemed to get any blight. And because the polytunnel was that um, sort of a green plastic, they were automatically shaded from the burning heat, whereas the greenhouse, it's just clear glass. And although I've got automatic vents and I've got a door, um, and we had the heat wave as well, I think on one occasion at least I came home from work and the thermometer inside had reached 50 degrees, well, everything was going to fry at that rate. The only thing that seemed to really, really thrive in there under those conditions was um, my chilies and my peppers. So what I've learned this year is that um, things aren't always what they seem. So where I imagined the method of planting and perhaps not sufficient watering was a problem for the tomatoes, probably wasn't that at all. It may well have been the fact that the ants' nests had um, attacked the root balls. So next year will be another year. Um, I may not follow the same way. I think what I might do, I might build um, a raised bed or a, a large trough in there for next year. Um, fill it with compost and then hopefully the ants won't be able to get in because that will be sealed within itself um, and we'll see next year. So the second thing that I've learned this year is oh it is so good to embrace the wildlife. I made a real conscious effort this year to encourage as many birds um, pollinators, um, mammals, like hedgehogs, mice, things like that, as much as I could into the garden um, because it's entertainment for me in a way. It adds another level to the garden because I just adore um, when I have the five minute break and I sit in my summer house and I just survey my little plot with a cup of coffee in hand and I can just sit mesmerised watching all the birds flock to the bird feeders um, and as you may have seen in an earlier video we've got a little mouse that's um, set up home under my summer house and as the pigeons and other birds scatter the seed he comes rushing out from underneath my summer house, runs along behind all the flower pots um, and obviously gets his little fill of seed and then dashes back to the safety of um, the cover of, of, the, of the summer house. Um, it's amused Paddy, my little dog. He's, he's chased a couple of times, totally unsuccessful, much to my amusement, but... Um, and then I spent days and days um, sitting out there, every opportunity I had with um, the camera, trying to catch this little fellow on camera. And then I was really successful on one occasion. So that's in one of my previous videos. So it's those little things that just add to the joy to the garden. Um, and I've got um, my little diary that I always keep and I've mentioned that before as well and I wrote down this year all the different wildlife that came into the garden that was either something I hadn't seen for many many years or completely new to the garden and one of the highlights this year was the hummingbird um, hawk moth which was just stunning and again I was so lucky to get that on film and you can see that in a previous video and um, what else have I got in here the red admirals they've returned I haven't seen them for a very long time um, a couple of meadow browns which are quite pretty oh and a comma butterfly which I don't think I've ever seen before I don't certainly don't recall it in the past it looked completely 
fresh and new to me and I had to look it up um, on the internet to try and find out what it was. So that was a thrill. Um, and then the birds, I've had long tail tits this year. I've had goldfinches. Um, we even had a sparrowhawk, which was, I mean, I know it's nature and everybody says, you know, don't be upset about it. But the ironic thing is um, on the very moment um, I'd finished installing my new birds feeding station and I filled all the containers and I sat back in the summer house to wait and see what happened. Um, there was loads of sparrows arrived and I was quite excited about that. And then from nowhere, this sparrow hawk just descended on the garden and swiped up one of the babies. And I will never forget the screams. It was horrible. Um, but like I've said, it's nature. Like many of you have said, it's nature. I've got to accept that, but I did feel responsible. But on the flip side, oh, it's a magnificent looking bird close up. And I just couldn't get it on film because I didn't expect it. It happened so fast. Uh, what else have I had? Oh, the dunnocks. Oh, I've got this little dunnock. It is the cutest little thing. And it dashes down, or it had been dashing down between all my runner bins. So it's not one of the um, birds that you see on the bird feeders. It's a ground feeder. And it hops around all on its own from bed to bed to bed. And I was just constantly watching it all through the summer. And uh, not so long ago, it's got a youngster with it now. So um, in the last few weeks, I've been watching the two of them. And they're just adorable. Um, so yeah, so that's, that's the second thing I've learned. If you love nature and you love your plot and you want it to work in unison, you need to encourage the wildlife and the pleasure that it gives is just been fabulous. Number three, hmm. it's not exactly um, a new skill that I've learned. It's more about um, a practice that I've adopted um, that I intend to carry on. Um, and the seeds of this kind of started last year because um, I've been growing vegetables for years, many, many years in different gardens, but more just dabbling and just growing the basics that I like and I know are easy to grow. So I've always grown potatoes. 
I've always grown carrots, um, onions and runner beans. So in the past, they've been my four staples and I've grown them without um, any question every single year. And then as I got more and more interested in um, growing vegetables and I took it a lot more seriously and um, eventually got my very first allotment, um, I made it a, a practice to um, expand on, shall I say, my repertoire. So with the allotment, I had enough room to grow sweet corn but on a large scale i've grown um, butternut squash which takes up a huge amount of room um, i've tried that but when i brought the allotment home and i was restricted with space i tended to be a little bit conservative on my planning so i stuck to all my basics um, but in fairly large quantities. So starting last year, um, and it was in the polytunnel, um, I thought I'd have a go at growing some celeriac. I didn't really know what it tasted like, um, but I had some seeds. I think they came free in a magazine or something. Um, so I thought, well, why not? And I, I'm sure it was last year. One of my sons took me to a vegan restaurant in Cambridge. Now, I'm definitely not a vegan. I couldn't give up my cheese for anybody. Um, but we were curious and um, he'd had some lunches there before now and kept saying, oh, come on, mum, let's go and try it. So I had a lasagna there and what they'd used, instead of using the pasta sheets in the lasagna, they'd use the leaves, if you like, of the, well not the leaves, but the layers. You kind of peel it back a bit like an onion and they they had layers um, of celeriac instead of the pasta sheets. And it was really, really nice. I really liked it. So I, I grew the celeriac. I had quite a few plants. Um, they weren't overly successful because I didn't really know what I was doing with them. Um, they weren't particularly large, about the size of a tennis ball, maybe. Um, and they seemed to have an awful lot of roots visible on the outside. Um, but I managed to rescue some of them. And I did make some mash and I roasted some and they were really lovely. So beginning the season this year with this kind of new practice in mind, I set out to try something different, make a conscious effort to grow at least one crop that I'd not tried before. So um, I guess growing the celeriac again this year has been really successful. And I can go on to that in a minute. Um, so that isn't the, the newbie this year because I did that last year. But this year I tried um, French climbing beans, which have got a quite long, very pale yellow flat pods. Um, never grown them before. They took quite a while to germinate, but once they were in the ground and they got going, cool, they, they were prolific. And I had many a meal throughout the summer months with the French climbing beans, and I absolutely loved them. So I'm so, so pleased that I tried that. Um, and then beside them, I grew the blotty beans as well, a, a, another type of bean I'd never, ever grown before. Um different character altogether you really grow them for them to be dried and stored for the winter so you don't grow them for the pods so this is my harvest it's not a huge harvest but it's enough for me and what I will do with those I'll select a handful at a time soak them overnight and they'll go into casseroles and stews just to bulk up and add a bit of extra protein um 
and you, I guess you could make some kind of a bean pie with it as well um, because I'm not vegetarian, I'm definitely not vegan but I'm not a huge meat eater either so there are times when I quite like vegetarian style meals so things with beans and the celeriac is just up my street so it's really nice. So going back to the celeriac, something that I learned um, was I was just um, reading some um, posts that were on a Facebook page that I follow for allotments and someone was saying with the celeriac that it's best if you continually remove the lower leaves as they grow, um, something I'd not heard of before. So I've done that throughout the growing season and they seem to have formed really beautiful bulbs Whereas last year I had sort of fist size balls, um, tennis ball shaped bulbs. These are really quite big, like this. Um, so I'll be harvesting them soon because I need the space for the winter peas. Um, so it's kind of two crops that were fairly new to me this year. So what I'm trying to say is I think what I've learned is you need to experiment you need to try different things it's very very easy just to grow the same same old crops year on year and I still grow them my favorites maybe in not such a huge quantity because I haven't got the space but instead I grow the variety so I've got lots of different um things growing at one time that I wouldn't have kind of envisaged in the past so I kind of guess that's it really I think perhaps number three might be a bit lame so just to summarize the three main things that I feel that I've learned this year and number one was growing in a greenhouse is very very different from growing in the polytunnel I used to have. The second thing I've learned is it's been the best thing ever to try and encourage the wildlife. I've planted differently this year to encourage the pollinators. I've been feeding the birds um, with a dedicated feeding station and it's really paid off. Um, it's good for the soul and just by observing their behaviours and that has been a real joy so that has been a real positive and then the third thing that I've learned is that it's very very easy just to keep growing the same old stuff time and time again um, and it's good to experiment so I'm making a, a conscious effort now that Every growing season, I'm going to grow at least one crop that I've not grown before. And at some future stage, I might even grow some cabbage. And I haven't eaten cabbage since I was at primary school 40 odd years ago. Um, and I hated cabbage then and I don't even know if I like it now. So that's something for the future. But if you've got any ideas, any suggestions of something unusual that I could grow in my small, small space, then please add that to the comments below. So I guess the next thing I need to do now is to nominate three other channels. And this is where I become very uh, presumptuous. Um, and I hope they don't mind this little channel giving them a big wave um, but the first person or the first channel that I would really like to challenge is Allotment Grow How. I've been following Adam for quite a lot of years now I just love his sense of humour it's very tongue-in-cheek but he's also very knowledgeable um, but he kind of helps you in a very, very subtle way. Um, and I love his video. So please, Adam, if you're willing to take this challenge, that would be a great honor. So my 
second nomination goes to Tony C. Smith. Um, another channel that I've been following for some years and he has a beautiful plot which is laid out of raised beds and um, what I like about his plot is um, it's plot envy to be honest because every time he pans his camera whatever crop the camera um, zooms in on the crops are just so wonderful they look so healthy and so neat and tidy I know it's not always clear on a camera but I could probably bet my life that if I was to walk around his plot there probably isn't any weeds there either it's immaculate and his knowledge is great um, he doesn't preach to the camera um, the information he sort of imparts on people um, is so helpful but in just um, a really nice and relaxed manner and uh, so I admire his plot very much and I'd be obviously very honoured if he was to um, acknowledge Annie's Kitchen Garden and rise to the challenge. So, um, Tony, I'm keeping my fingers crossed. So my third and final nomination, and this is the biggie, this is the one where I've got my fingers and toes crossed and, um, I think it very, very unlikely that this channel's even heard of my little one. Um, in the scheme of things, mine is small fry. Um, but it's Sean's Kitchen Garden. Sean James Cameron, I've been following you for years and I've watched you go from a couple of plots. Um... I think the first one you were at the mo for the longest, um, I believe it's, uh, was it Crystal Palace area? Um, I live in Cambridgeshire. I've been up here 26, 27 years now, but I grew up in Kent and my nan lived in Sydenham. Um, my parents grew up in Sydenham area during the war years and before. So, I kind of know that area, so when I've heard the word Crystal, or the name Crystal Palace, it just automatically feels like home. And I believe the plot that you're at now is in the Bromley area, which is even closer to home because I, I personally grew up in Alpington. That's my hometown in Kent. So, you know, it's quite nice to have that familiarity because, as I say, I'm in Cambridge now and it's vastly different. Um, and I don't really have any connections in that area anymore. So, um, but I'm digressing now. So, Sean, um, I've watched you. Um, your knowledge is just immense. It's amazing. Um, I love it when you stop for a cup of tea or time for a tea, cup of tea, um, my little tipple is coffee, but whenever I have a coffee, I think of you, because um, I can appreciate that five minute break. Um, and I've seen you go through different things where you're, you're not quite sure of your plans um, or direction. Um, and you've been quite experimental, I think, over quite a few years. Um, but I think where you are now, you seem really, really happy with the plot that you've got now. Um, reinvigorated. And I know you're not putting out as many videos as you were before. Um, but you're spending more time actually working on the plot. And um, the little snippets that you're giving to us all. Um, it's great. I love it. I, I really like what you're doing. Um, and I hope you're really, really enjoying it now. So I'm keeping my fingers and toes crossed and I'm really, really hoping that you would humour me enough to 
rise to this challenge. Thank you. Number two. Sorry, that was my dishwasher. 